Welcome to the second lecture in general topology. The topics that we'll explore in this lecture include logic and techniques of proof. We'll define a topology on a set and look at some examples. And we're going to look at the concepts of open and closed sets. Okay, so we're going to begin this lecture uh, with a review of logic and techniques of proof. I'm covering this material in the hopes that anyone who watches the series, regardless of their background in mathematics, will be able to follow the proofs because topology by its very nature is uh, proof intensive. So first I will remind you of what an implication is. An implication is a compound statement of the form P implies Q. Now if written out, the implication takes the form if P, then Q. In the implication, the statement P is called the hypothesis, and the statement Q is called the conclusion. So to prove an implication directly, we assume that the hypothesis is true and show that this leads logically to the conclusion. Now given an implication we can form related statements. So given an implication P implies Q the converse of the implication is the compound statement. Q implies P. So notice that in the converse, we have a reversal of roles. What was the hypothesis in the implication is now the conclusion in the converse. And what was the, the conclusion in the, hypothesis, uh, in the implication is now the hypothesis of the converse. Again, given an implication, P implies Q, the contrapositive of the implication is the compound statement. Not Q implies not P. Once again, given an implication, P implies Q, the inverse of the implication is the compound statement. Not P implies not Q. From this truth table, we can see that the implication P implies Q is logically equivalent to its contrapositive not Q implies not P. So we can group these four statements into pairs that are logically equivalent. The implication P implies Q is logically equivalent to its contrapositive not Q implies not P. And the converse Q implies P is logically equivalent 
to the inverse, not P implies not Q. Notice that the inverse is the contrapositive of the converse. So one technique of proof is proof by con uh, contrapositive. And this is a way to prove uh, an implication indirectly as the implication is logically equivalent to its contrapositive we can prove the implication by proving the contrapositive we prove the implication P implies Q indirectly by proving its contrapositive not Q implies not P. And sometimes this is an easier uh, compound statement to prove. From this truth table we can see that the implication P implies Q is logically equivalent to the implication that P and not Q implies a contradiction. Another uh, indirect proof of an implication is proof by contradiction. The method of proof by contradiction is based on the logical equivalence that the implication P implies Q is logically equivalent to P and not Q implies a contradiction. So to prove an implication indirectly by contradiction, we assume that both the hypothesis and the, the negation of the uh, conclusion are both true and show that by that assumption we arrive at a contradiction and when we arrive at that contradiction this is logically equivalent to proving that P implies Q and so uh, again an indirect proof of the implication by the method of contradiction from this truth table we can see that the implication P implies R and the implication Q implies R is logically equivalent to the implication P or Q implies R. Another important method of proof to be aware of is proof by cases. The method of proof by cases is based on the logical equivalence of the uh, implication P implies R and Q implies R being logically equivalent to P or Q implies R P or Q implies R. We use this method uh, when we must consider uh, two or more cases so let's look at an example. Suppose we need to prove that a union A sub 1, union A sub 2 is a subset of a set B. So if an element is in the union, then it is either in the set A sub 1 or the set A sub 2, and so we must consider two cases. So we show that A sub 1 is a subset of the set B, and that A sub 2 is a subset of the set B, and uh, when we do this, we have that as given an arbitrary element in the set A sub 1, this implies that that same element is in the set B. And given an element in the set A sub 2, this implies that that same element is in the set B. And so by the logical equivalence, we have that X is in A sub 1 or X is in A sub 2 implies that X is in B. In other words, the element X is in, if the element X is in the uh, union of A1 and A2, then this implies that X is in the set B. And so the union is a subset of the set B. Okay?
So next we look at a biconditional, a biconditional, is a compound statement. of the form P implies and is implied by Q. When written out, this takes the form P if and only if Q. Notice that in a biconditional, the statement P is logically equivalent to the statement Q. In this truth table, we see that the biconditional P if and only if Q is logically equivalent to the implication P implies Q and its converse Q implies P. The biconditional P if and only if Q is logically equivalent to the implication P implies Q and its converse Q implies P. And so to prove a biconditional, we must prove that both the implication and its converse are both true. Now, we have already seen an example of this. In the uh, previous lecture, we proved De Morgan's laws, and each of those laws is a statement of set equality. Now, uh, by definition, the set A is equal to the set B if and only if both A is a subset of the set B and B is a subset of the set A. In order to prove the right-hand side of this logical equivalence, we had to demonstrate that given an arbitrary element in the set A, that this implied that that same element was in the set B, and conversely, given an element in the set B, that this implied that that same element was in the set A. And so we did, in fact, prove A by conditional. Now this brings up an important point. A definition, whether stated as such or not, is always a biconditional. Oops, biconditional. Because in a definition, one, one thing is uh, said to be equivalent to another. For example, in the definition for set equality, the condition that two sets are the same is logically equivalent to the condition of simultaneous set inclusion of the two sets. Okay, so now we're ready to define a topology. Let X be any arbitrary set. A topology on X is a collection which we call tau of subsets of the set X such that the following conditions are true. First, the empty set and the entire set must be in that collection tau. Second, given a indexed family of subsets of the collection tau, an arbitrary union of those subsets is again in the collection tau. And third, given a finite number of elements in the collection tau, the finite intersection of those subsets is again in the collection tau. And so a topology on a set X is a collection of subsets of the set X such that the empty set and the entire set are in the collection. Any arbitrary union of elements in the collection is once again in that collection. 
and any finite intersection of the elements uh, of the uh, subsets in the collection tau is once again in the collection tau. A set X together with a specified topology is called a topological space. and is sometimes denoted using parentheses the uh, collection of the set X together with its topology. Now if the topology on the set X is clear then we will simply make reference to the topological space X. Now in mathematics a space is a set which admits some type of structure. Uh, there's an interesting philosophical question in mathematics and that is whether mathematics is created or discovered? Well, I'm one of those who believe that mathematics is discovered. Uh, the set admits a structure. We do not impose a structure on the set. Uh, in the case of a topological, topological space, the structure of interest is the topology itself. And so far, what we know about this space is that the uh, empty set and the entire set are in the space. We can take arbitrary unions of the elements in the space and remain in the space. And we can take finite intersections of the elements in the space and uh, still remain in the space. Now, uh, this space, uh, a topological space, has other properties that uh, we will explore. Some of these properties are beautiful, elegant properties that evade uh, our intuition and can only be discovered through rigorous application of reason. And that is why uh, proofs, being able to read them, being able to construct them, is so important uh, in the study of topology.